Hello there, Cancers. I hope this video is uh, finding you well. I apologize for the delay with this reading. Um, I was traveling the past few days and I got really sick with the flu. I caught it on the plane, so um, I'm, I, I was really under the weather and there was no way I could get this video done for you guys on time, so I apologize. I wanted to, you know, feel well before I can start the videos rather than shortchange you and do a video that might not be uh, when I'm not feeling at my best, okay? So I apologize. Um, without further ado, let's go into this reading here. Um, first of all, I see um, it's, um, it's a, a scene near the window, okay? So there's like light streaming through a window. And as I look up, I see like um, little um, boxes and it, it's mirrors, okay? They're like very, very small. Um, there are like 10, 15 of them, or a lot of them. They're kind of um, tied up with like fishing wire, which is a clear wire, right? It's very thin, it's very clear, it's translucent. And they're hung from the window. So these um, frames with mirrors on them, they're kind of spinning, okay? And the light is streaming through them and hitting them and it's bouncing off the light. So I see a lot of just reflections reflections, a lot of reflections, a lot of um, mirroring energies, and a lot of uh, just, you know, bouncing back and forth, like deflecting, bouncing, as well as, you know, the mirror spinning. So I, it, it's just, that's what uh, the message I was getting is, there's a lot of reflection, there's a lot of contemplation, there's a lot of mirroring energy, and as most of you are aware, any time we are dealing with another person, uh, it, you know, the, the communication, the interaction, it's a two-way street. And so if we're approaching somebody and they seem very standoffish, they seem really just, you know, um, they seem as if they don't want to interact with us. We're going to get defensive. We're going to recoil. And we're going to kind of like mirror that energy back to them, right? And because you guys are a water sign, you guys are deeply very sensitive. You're very sensitive. You also pick up nonverbal cues really well, okay? Water signs are so adept at that. And so you, you sense people's energies, you sense people's attitudes, their tone, the, 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 the words they use, everything comes out as if you're able to read their true intention. And so I feel like there is a significant relationship in your life. And this is somebody that you're dealing with, interacting with on a regular basis. And you have a strong emotional connection with. And I feel like the way in which the two of you are dealing with each other, I, I see almost like this dance with the mirrors. Okay, I'll reflect back whatever I'm getting back. So it's like... You're not approaching each other with your true authentic self. You're mirroring exactly whatever they give you and they likewise. They're mirroring whatever you give them. I feel that you're not able to show your true colors or your true intentions um, because you're deeply sensitive. You don't want to get hurt. You don't want to feel rejected. You don't want to say something and have the other person shoot down your ideas, shoot down your plans because you know, you're know you sensitive. But I feel that the person that you're dealing with, kind of like that sun streaming through the window, it's, uh, it's vibrant, it's fiery, it's passionate. And this is somebody who's very verbose, who's very opinionated, who's, um, who's very like, in a normal interaction, they are very authentic. You know, they, they have strong opinions, they have strong ideas, they have plans, and they're able to verbalize all of these. But when they're interacting with you, because they see you very skittish, very, um, I wanna say slow to act, slow to move, they feel rejected because this person has a lot of pride, okay? So I feel like two people coming together and one person, you, deeply sensitive, and the other person has a lot of pride. And both parties are very afraid about getting hurt. 
because you know one person is like saving face and the other person is just like emotionally I don't want to get hurt and so we have a little bit of a stalemate here where there's lack of communication meaningful communication where there's a lack of coming being able to come together being able to talk about things being able to reconcile being able to resolve issues resolve problems because both of you have your walls up and both of you have your own hang-ups and your own blockages that's disallowing the two of you to come together so lots of mirroring energy one person might say you know like hey do you want to go out on Friday and then I feel like they might say that to you and then you kind of hesitate you're thinking you know you're 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 pausing and you're thinking like what do I have to do Friday night is there anything important but because you take that that step back and because you hesitate without telling them give me just one second let me think about you know what I have um, to do on Friday night because you're not able to tell them that they see you hesitate they see you taking a step back and they mistakenly think that oh this person you know the cancer doesn't want to go out with me doesn't want to see me is not interested and so they back off and they might say in a very flippant way oh it's okay I'm actually busy anyways or they might inadvertently say you know um, Joan and Mike my other friends are gonna be there you should come with us if you like and then they dash off because their pride has been hurt because they feel rejected so I just feel like there's so much miscommunication um, and we need to be very aware and you know this is not on you because like the, the energy is mirroring right I don't feel this is entirely on you but I just feel that there is a strong need to communicate okay a very strong need to communicate look at this roar this is the five of wands fighting arguing uh, not being able to agree on things but look at this roar this is really powerful this is somebody who's very very pissed off this is somebody who has so much to say and yet when you look at this card you 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 feel the frustration right you feel the anger you feel the need to communicate and yet we're looking at it and, and we don't hear any noise right so this is what I mean I just feel like there's there's so much that needs to be hashed out there's so much that needs to be said and look at this one person is screaming and the other person is recoiling the other one is conflict avoidant the other one is like you're being uncouth you're being too melodramatic you're being so so like one person has so much they want to say and the other person I feel is being dismissive and so this spread is ripe with miscommunication misunderstanding um, not being able to put ourselves in another person's shoes that's what it feels like to me they with you or you with them and whenever I see that happen whenever I see a situation or the energies that uh, where one person is not able to understand where the other person is coming from and one person is you know accusatory like oh that person's so melodramatic that person is such a drama queen that person like blows things out of proportion that person is um, you know too too impulsive whatever it is like these accusations um, every time we do that I, I feel as if the other person you know whenever anger or, or really strong emotions come out it's rarely just about one thing right it's a series of things of life experiences a culmination of all the things that could go wrong and it's kind of like you know on that day it's a, 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 a the the perfect storm condition happens and then that person just blows up so it's just rarely one major factor one major event it's a series of things that contributed to this outpouring of really strong emotions and 
we can't be dismissive. We have to, you know, begin the process of learning to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes little by little, day by day, to be able to understand how a series of events have shaped the person that they are and what we can do in order, you know, given their, their penchants for possibly uh, blowing up, being very emotionally explosive or being melodramatic, whatever we want to call it. Those are symptoms of something deeper, right? I'm not asking you to be a psychiatrist. I'm not asking you to be anybody's therapist. I am asking you, as um, from what I see here, is to listen to what's really bothering the other person without projecting, okay? Leaving our preconceived notions at the door when we're dealing with this situation so that we can really hear what the other person is trying to say to us. And I mentioned before, you guys are deeply sensitive. You guys are very deeply sensitive. And uh, you pick up a lot of nonverbal cues that other signs miss because you're very observant. You understand human behavior. You understand things really well in a very intuitive, um, automatic way. But when you're dealing with this person, I feel like, you know, you have your mind made up about them. They are a certain way. And so conversation is at a standstill because in your mind, they are this way and nothing they can do will ever change that. And so you don't want to listen or you tune out or you uh, dash out the door. You don't want to, you, you know, it, it, it seems to me like it's, it's dismissive. Okay, and once again, it, it's a mirroring energy. So they could be doing the same thing to you. And so one of the things that we can do to kind of de-escalate this, this, this tension as we progress through, you know, January, we have here the hangman. And we have the Ace of Swords. So let me talk about this because this is pretty much your outcome. This is like the saving grace in this uh, spread. Both amazing cards, okay? The Ace of Pent, uh, I'm sorry, the Ace of Feathers. This is the Ace of Swords, okay? Understanding. And this is not about understanding how something works, understanding how events transpired, understanding what happened. It's requiring you to look at things from a different perspective with the hangman. Okay, looking at life upside down. So, one of the things that I was taught about my job, which, um, my, my main job, was um, a lot of the times we are very quick, you know, when someone gives us a piece of information, we're very quick about tearing it apart, dissecting it, and proving it wrong, right? The way our mind works. And uh, in using the scientific method, we want to test theories, test hypotheses, and we want to, you know, given a fact, we think of all the ways in which it could be false. But the work that I'm doing right now is the opposite of that, because given a piece of information, we think about all the ways in which it could be true. So we operate under the assumption that it could be true. And then we ask questions around it to either debunk it or to, proven it, uh, to prove its, uh, its truth. And so I feel like there's a lot to be said here about a situation where you understand it, you understand how it works, you understand what it encapsulates, you understand what it's about, but it's really forcing you to look at things from a different perspective and, and really questioning, you know, do you know all there is to know about the situation? Is there something that you're overlooking? With this Ace of Feathers, this is almost like, you know, the, the, the goat is really cute, right? Like in this depiction, he's very adorable, but he's also got his head held up. It's like um, turning up your nose at something it's like um, being a little bit, I want to say, presumptuous and being a little bit like, oh, I, I, I already know that. So it's really asking you, you know, um, 
Is there something that you might possibly overlook? Is there something about this situation that you're not 100% aware of? Is there some missing information that could potentially, um, that could potentially dissuade you from a specific course of action or a specific opinion? Is there some major, major piece of information that could turn this situation around? Because I feel like at the very last moment, there's going to be something coming into the picture that will turn the situation around. A last piece of um, information, a last ditch attempt, because I feel like somebody is trying to communicate with you. And then I also feel you could also be dealing with somebody who you're trying to communicate with. And they, they are, they're like, I already know, I already know everything. So they could appear very haughty very um like like a know-it-all or very much like very fixed in their opinions they've got their minds made up and nothing can persuade them otherwise and i feel like at the very last minute it's like a very last ditch attempt to turn a situation around okay it, it brings about clarity it it slashes through all these assumptions and presumptions we have about the situation or the person and then I also feel like it's going to throw a wrench in the works because it's it's taking into account a factor a piece of information that you have not thought about prior and because of the, that it, 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 it turns the situation around okay I, I do feel it's for the better I don't feel that you have to worry about that. Um, there is another message or another image that there was another image that came through when I was shuffling. So let me talk about it really fast because I feel like it's echoing the same theme, but um, maybe it might apply for some of you. I see this baby. He's a little boy. He's a toddler, like really young toddler. So, you know, he's at an age where he can crawl around and can make noises and stuff, right? So like probably around two or three, he's sitting on a couch and the it zooms into him sitting on a couch and he's so adorable. And um, he, I'm kind of seeing his profile. He's looking this way, okay? He's on the couch and mom and dad are kind of walking past him, walking back and forth, possibly um, packing, maybe moving um renovating the house either way they're very busy they're walking back and forth and he's looking at all this activity around the house he's looking at mom and dad pacing back and forth and um he he's confused you know he's just like why does it feel so tense in here why does it feel so busy why is everybody see why do they both seem so worried so keep in mind his whole world revolves around his mom and dad okay so babies are designed in such a way that you know they recognize their caretakers they recognize the person that will feed them the person that will tuck them into bed the person that will protect them from harm so you know it, it's an evolutionary development where in utero they they recognize their mother's voice their their father's voice if the father's in the picture um and they recognize you know for sheer survival instincts they recognize faces that of the people that will take care of them and so he's looking at the faces of his parents and I don't see their faces. I just see them kind of like walking back and forth near him and they seem worried. They seem distressed. And he's just like, he, he feels anxious, but he's a baby. He doesn't know why. And then he's kind of scared a little bit. He feels uncomfortable. He feels scared. So he reaches his arms up. And when babies do that, it means they want comfort. They want to be held. They want to be close to you. They want to either soothe themselves or even sometimes soothe you. And mom and dad is just walking back and forth. They're too busy and wrapped up in their own things and they don't notice that he's crying for attention. So he does that and then he gets ignored and then he, you know, starts making noise with his mouth and he gets ignored and then he starts crying. But I don't hear any noise. I don't hear any sound. I don't hear the sound of the child crying. I just saw the scene where there's a situation that um, where somebody is like 
reaching out, trying to contact, trying to communicate, they might not have the vocabulary in which to communicate with you. And um, so the scene cuts out. So I feel as if it's asking you, you know, is there somebody in your life that you're not giving enough attention to? And, you know, God forbid, I, I don't think it's a, like a toddler, but I feel like it's somebody who is not able to communicate, who might not have the vocabulary, who might not have the linguistic skills, who might not be mentally aware of their needs and their wants. They, they just know that they feel uncomfortable. They just know that they want to break the silence. They just want attention. They just want you to focus on them. And you're very busy going about your day. And, and uh, th this is where I feel like, you know, you feel like the other person might be a little bit melodramatic. But I feel like you're dealing with someone who's very deeply intuitive and very deeply sensitive as well. They The way in which they projected is... Um, they're very proud okay so when they want something and it's shut down then they recoil and they never ask again okay so that's that's what i'm sensing um i feel for many of you i feel for many of you there is a situation here it's a like a love relationship um it could be family as well but i feel more so love relationship with a significant other where one person might want to be you know intimate and the other person's very busy and then the the person that wants to be intimate asks like hey you know let's spend the night together and the other person's like i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy so just imagine if someone is like coming to you with their all with their their hearts on their sleeves wanting to have you know like like making their themselves very vulnerable wanting to be intimate with you in like a very vulnerable way, emotionally, physically, and just giving you their full being and you're telling them, oh, I'm busy. And you don't follow up with more explanations. You don't follow up with like a hug. You don't follow up with like a promise. Oh, we'll do this next time, you know? It's very hurtful. So I feel like somebody might be dealing with this and then it happens time and time again and it's hurtful and and you know you you become callous you stop asking you stop wanting to be intimate you become resentful you start wanting to get back at the other person you start wanting to do things and say things and behave in a way so that the other person knows and and sees and understands that oh i don't need you because that's what I'm feeling here. We have here the Four of Wands. This is a family situation, but what I'm seeing here is this is turning away. And then I have here the Empress, very bashful. You know, um, bunnies are very skittish, okay? They're, they're very shy innately and very warm and cuddly, but in this situation, it's like you come at somebody with your all and without an explanation, it feels like somebody's rejecting another person. And then over time, so that same scenario, over time, you know, the, the one person has been turned down many, many times. They, they, they become callous, they become, they become resentful. And then when their partner is in a tough situation and their partner needs them, then they're just like, Oh, you're being melodramatic, you know. You should learn to take care of that yourself. So I feel here there's deeply entrenched resentment <clears throat> and deeply entrenched resentment that is coming to the light. And I feel that this conversation, there's going to be a communication breakthrough. Thank God. 
because everything is done so subversively and so like passive aggressively it's really frustrating for me to see this and and you know and be in it it feels so uncomfortable so everything has been under the radar has been done in a very passive aggressive manner has been you know like um it's like fumbling around for your keys you're frustrated it's dark you can't see what you're looking at you're trying multiple sets of keys to get into your house so you can you know rest and and recuperate and you're fumbling and it's cold outside and it's like a combination of things and it just piles on and and it's really uncomfortable and i feel like it's so subversive under the radar looking on at a situation wondering what the other person's up to and yet not willing to communicate like what are you doing today? How was your day today? Just like silent treatment, I feel. Silent treatment, passive aggressiveness, silent treatment, everything is done under, under the radar. It is so uncomfortable for me to read this. I hope you guys are not dealing with this because as a water sign, I can't imagine this being a comfortable place for you to be in or a comfortable relationship for you to have to endure you know we don't have to endure relationships but that's what it feels like here and then i also feel like somebody is very prickly porcupine somebody is very prickly um imagine slights you could give them a compliment and they're uh defensive you know and they're just like, what do you mean by that? And even though you're giving them a compliment, a perfectly sincere compliment, so I feel like there's just so much room for misunderstandings here. And like I said, the saving grace is that there will be an uproar, that there will be a, a, a communication breakthrough. And the moment when this happens, I just would urge you to let them talk, hear them out. Let the train, the, the stream of consciousness pour out because you're dealing with a situation where it's not just about one thing that, uh, that, 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 you know, created the misunderstanding. It's a series of things, layers upon layers of BS, you know, um, evasiveness, resentment, uh, missed opportunities just like layers and layers of it piled on and they need to get that off their chest they need to unload and they need to they, they want you to understand it's not just one thing cancers it's a myriad of things and I, I, I just feel like you're dealing with someone who is not sophisticated with the way in which they express themselves okay so let's just say and 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 um let me explain what that means i don't want cross watchers to get offended but I, this is what i want to say especially if you're a cross watcher and you're a fire sign um, lack of sophistication when it comes to communication and this has nothing to do with the way you which you communicate but it has something to do with the way in which you communicate with your cancerian person does that make sense so this is not about you know you being a bad communicator this is just you communicating in a way so that the cancer person can understand so let's just give i'll give you an example um i'll use cancer and sagittarius because that's a really hot duel right now okay so cancers and sagittarius they're walking around okay it's a it's kind of like a, a, a cool day, not too hot, not too cold. And the Sagittarius is, you know, Sagittarius is dressed really well and, and Sagittarius is expecting for it to get really cold. So Sagittarius wore her winter boots and her winter coat walking around with Cancers. Cancers, you know, of course, checks the weather and knows that it's not going to be too hot. So Cancers uh, is dressed appropriately sneakers a light jacket and you know is feeling really comfortable and then Sagittarius is walking around getting a little bit hot getting a little bit like um, warm under the collar and they're realizing that their boots 
is not appropriate and they're realizing that it's hurting their feet and they're realizing that their wool socks is burning up and so they're they're getting frustrated and everything is just it, it seems like because of their own physical discomfort everything that day just becomes bad okay they could go to like the nicest restaurant and then sagittarius is just frustrated and it's like i don't like the food i i feel hot i i i, I feel tired my feet are uncomfortable and so you feel like the sagittarius person is very melodramatic and the sagittarius person is doesn't want to ruin the fun doesn't want to say let's go home doesn't want to say like you know um it's like there are so many things the Sagittarius person might not know what is really bothering them and what is really bothering them could be as simple as you know the my shoes are too hot my socks are too hot I'm not dressed appropriately I'm wearing this big coat and I just want to throw away this big coat so I can be comfortable but the Sagittarius might not know how to verbalize all these things all the, all of these factors that are affecting their emotional state and so when they are upset they just lash out like they're frustrated and they're angry and they're they're picking at the things that's right in front of them rather than getting to the root of the problem okay and so i feel like you know this lack of sophistication when it comes to being able to know exactly what's bothering us what is the root of the problem and like i said i mean in their defense it's like it's a lattice like a lattice on a pie layers upon layers of things over the years just piling on and you know i feel like one person is not able to forget all of the slights, all of the hurts, all of the rejection, all of the times in which the other person made us feel this little and they hold on to that resentment. And so I do urge you to um, be patient with whoever it is that you're dealing with. And if you are a cross watcher, I do urge you to be very patient with your Cancerian person because I feel like there's a very important conversation that needs to be had. Temperance, we have patience. Things are not always black and white, okay? Layers upon layers. Okay, things are not always just clear cut. Some people don't see things in black and white. Some people are just like, let's make allowances for gray areas. Let's, you know, in the real world, things are rarely neatly compartmentalized in, in their um, equivalent parts like this. So this is sort of like, you know, give and take. I say one thing, you say another. We both try to hear um, each other's side of the story and being patient as well. The, um, the stripes on the zebra helps it blend into its environment, okay? So it's like being able to blend in, but also being able to put ourselves in another person's shoes, okay? So I feel like this is what's coming through for you guys. And um, I have here no pentacle suit. So no news is good news on the uh, financial front. And I feel like finances is going to be the least of your concern because you have a very important conversation that needs to be had with another person. And I do hope that you get it resolved. I do hope that the two of you can, at least in this moment in time, see eye to eye, understand one another and approach this conversation with a lot of understanding, a lot of intention to try to understand, a lot of compassion, a lot of compassion, okay? And I pray that if you're dealing with this in a cross watcher, that they are also approaching this with a lot of compassion. But I do feel somebody's really pissed off. Okay. Very prickly, very defensive, and five of acorns. Um, melodramatic, okay? And and just like they want to be heard so badly. And so, you know, give them the time of day if you're dealing with them. Okay? I know it's easier said than done because I feel like this is a long-standing conflict 
and it's deeply entrenched and it's uncomfortable. But, you know, um, I had a situation where we had, I had a, like a major confrontation and what I did ahead of time was to pray that both sides could reach an agreement that is favorable. And I kept that in mind during the confrontation and at the end everything worked out. You have to set the intention that both sides can, you know, see the light, both sides can sympathize, and then both sides can come together with a lot of compassion during this conversation. And I feel like everything will work out, you know, the, the best outcome for all, okay? The intention has to be set without expectations. So it's not about, you know, I want to win this argument or I want them to see how much they've made me suffer. It's not about that. It's about, you know, doing what's best for both parties and approaching a situation with compassion from both sides. I will leave it at that for you, Cancer. I hope the February reading brings you a lot more closure and a lot more peace. I apologize if this sounds negative. It's what I'm seeing, so I have to relay what I see. Um, once again, I apologize for the delay with this reading. I wish you all the best, okay? Take care of yourself, and I hope that everything clears up so we can start, you know, the new year with new energies, okay? Take care.